John Calvin on Psalm 11, verses 1 through 4. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. In the Lord I take refuge. However much the world may hate and persecute us, we ought nevertheless to continue steadfast at our post, that we may not deprive ourselves of a right to lay claim to the promises of God, or that these may not slip away from us, and, however much and however long we may be harassed, we ought always to continue firm and unwavering in the faith of having the call of God. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. The psalmist glories in the assurance of the favor of God. Being destitute of human aid, he betakes himself to the providence of God. It is a signal proof of faith to take and to borrow, so to speak, light from heaven to guide us to the hope of salvation when we are surrounded in this world with darkness on every side. All men may acknowledge that the world is governed by the providence of God, but when there comes some sad confusion of things which disturbs their ease and involves them in difficulty, there are few who retain in their minds the firm persuasion of this truth. But from the example of David, we ought to make such an account of the providence of God as to hope for a remedy from his judgment, even when matters are in the most desperate condition, when in all the world all justice lies trodden underfoot, and faithfulness has perished, David reflects that God sits in heaven, perfect and unchanged, from whom it became him to look for the restoration of order from the state of miserable confusion. He does not simply say that God dwells in heaven, but that he reigns there, as it were, in a royal palace, and has his throne of judgment there. Nor do we indeed render to him the honor which is his due, unless we are fully persuaded that his judgment seat is a sacred sanctuary for all who are in affliction and unrighteously oppressed. When, therefore, deceit, craft, treachery, cruelty, violence, and extortion reign in the world, in short, when all things are thrown into disorder and darkness by injustice and wickedness, let faith serve as a lamp to enable us to behold God's heavenly throne, and let that sight suffice to make us wait in patience for the restoration of things to a better state.